Hi there. Uh, thanks for watching our channel today. Uh, we are going to be talking about lighting and how to prepare for that. Now, um, in today's society, there's a lot of things on the news that are coming around. Uh, there's all kinds of talk about if um, an EMP strike in the atmosphere were to happen, basically where a nuclear attack went over our planet, uh, that would cause a total grid failure. Uh, and most people really wouldn't even know what was happening at first. You just wouldn't have any power, but you would figure it out quite quick. Now, there's other things and other reasons you could um, have a natural disaster or simply a storm that knocked out power lines if you live where somewhere where you don't you're not off grid. So what we're talking about today is all the little things that you can prepare for now for any kind of emergency. It's a great thing to start with. So we all know that we can have candles. That's a given, right? Everybody has candles or most everybody does. What I like to do is I keep my leftover jars and I intentionally kept this one. It's just got a little bit of wax left in it. Now, if you were to take all your waxes and just flick them out, I usually can use like a, an old butter knife or something and pop them out. You can actually melt all these down and take all of them together, put a new wick in it and you'll have a whole new candle that'll have all kinds of multicolors. You can also take the little votive candles. I always stock up on these when I see them and simply drop it in you've got yourself a new safekeeping for candles. There's also thing like tea light candles. Um, I always keep a bag of these on hand. The last time I got them, I think it was $1.99 for 50 of them. Um, you can pick them up almost anywhere. They're relatively cheap and they're great just to have to get kind of get you by. Um, honestly, these are something simple that anybody can get. I mean, there's no cost to them really. I mean, there is, but it's not a huge cost. There's also emergency candles that are long burning. My sweet youngest daughter, uh, when Zombieland first came out, she just, uh, she was like that movie. And so she got me these and wrote zombie candles on the top just so that I could be prepared. And it's funny how things get like, like that get instilled in your children. But um, so never use these yet, but I have them in case I need them. Other things that you can do is you can have your lanterns. Uh, those are easy. You can just fill them up with either your white fuel or kerosene. Uh, it's very easy to put a new wick into them and, um, simple, and you can simply burn it. And by adjusting, uh, your wick will give you about the appropriate uh, ambient light. The more wick that's showing, the brighter the less wick, the duller. Uh, <clears throat> then there's also things like uh, the old oil lamps. Now, I actually keep one of these in all of our bedrooms. I have, and I also have one in the dining room that kind of lights up the whole house. Now, <laughs> there's a couple of things with those. Um, you can use uh, pure lamp oil, which. Uh, over the years, as I've seen them on sale, I even found a couple of these at garage sales that were never opened. I just take them and I store them away in case I ever need them because I do have several oil lamps that I have also picked up at yard sales or estate sales over the years. My mom even got me a couple. I, I actually collect lanterns and old lamps. So I do have an overabundance of these oil lamps. They're super easy to keep on hand. They provide you with so much light. Now I do want to point out um, something I didn't know when I first started out. Whenever you're going to uh, have these oil lamps, which I'm telling you, they have hours and hours of burn time on them. Your um, wicks that you can pick up, um, once you put, first put them in, they actually need to soak for about an hour before before you can light them. Otherwise, they're not gonna burn. And I remember when I first started, I could not figure out why I couldn't get it to burn. And I darn near ruined one because I was just like torching the darn thing just to get it to burn. So don't make the mistake I did. Um, and just be sure to let it soak for about an hour. If you get prepared ahead of time, then it won't be no big deal. 
and you can just have it ready to go and then when you need it just light it I also like to store plenty of these on hand just in case one of them runs out um, I'll always have a backup um, I have several on hand for that and you know honestly uh, when our kids gosh I think they were in like uh, grade school we decided to try something out just to see how it would work and it was I'm so glad we did it so <clears throat> where we lived we lived we always had a lot of power outages it was it seemed like it was all the time and it could be anywhere from a few hours to several days so we had all these lanterns and oil lamps so we decided we were gonna try to go four days using no electricity and just see how it was. It was a winter time. We had a wood stove, which is also another source of light. It doesn't put out a ton, but it is light. Uh, we It lights up our living room at night while we're watching TV. Um, so we would, I cook off of my wood stove all the time. I can, I make pancakes off it, or I can put a stew or roast or whatever on there. Not a big deal. So we use that for cooking and heating up teas and drinks and hot chocolate and stuff like that and then we lit the house only by our lanterns and lamps and we kind of tried to make it fun for the kids it did a couple of things one it let us know that yeah we can do this and we've been through it so now we did it when it wasn't a scary time so now we know we could do it if we needed to also it let us kind of know about how much we were going to burn through and finally, it let us know what else do we need to have on hand in case we do need to do this for a long-term situation. So th that was a really great practice run. It was kind of like what you'd call a dry run, and it, it was wonderful for us. And so if you have the opportunity, I would definitely encourage you, even if it's just 24 hours, try it out and see how it works for you and your family. Now, most people don't realize that um, if you have these things you can use other items besides just like you know the pure light oil you can use olive oil now I will tell you avocado oil is gonna be the most smokeless of all the oils but you can use any oil you have it might have a little smoke to it some of its okay um, there's other ones that aren't so good but um, you know olive oil another great thing if you're using those is you can simply use the grease that you're cooking with so what you will need to do is you'll need to get a, a nice strainer of some sort I recommend that you get a jar that's maybe a little fatter than it is thinner and strain your grease because you don't want any a lot of food particles getting in it right then you can get a wick and simply give it time to start cooling down but as it starts to thicken stick your wick down in it make sure to leave yourself at least a quarter inch on top so you have something to light and you've got yourself a candle now you can use just about any jar for any kind of candle most people don't even realize that uh, there's many different options that you have you can take something as simple as a chopstick and you can simply take a cord, uh, I don't really want to use these cords, but you could simply wrap a cord around and have a little sticking out from the end. Stick it in, of course this, this is a little too long, but stick it in and then you've got it ready to go. So there's many options. You can even take like an old jar, like a spaghetti jar or something that has one of those metal lids, but it's a glass jar. You can simply put a string of any kind, even a shoelace down in there. You just need to put a hole through the top and have some kind of oil in it and it will burn. It's a very simple method. So don't get so focused that you have to run out and spend all these money, this money on products because you really don't need to. You can simply use stuff that's around your house or that you can get your hands on for cheap. So don't worry about the money aspect of it. Other options are glow sticks. They're fun for the kids. We have these in all of our bug out bags. Uh, they're nice just to have. I have, you know, probably four or five in my bug out bag. Plus I have some on my sock drawer 
And then I have some in my pantry, so if I ever need them, I can just use these. It's a very simple thing to do. The other thing that not everybody thinks of is you can simply have a dish of any kind. This is just a simple little saucer, and you can put a little bit of oil or grease in it and create your own wick. Now to do that, I have a couple ideas. So this is just um, a piece of old sheet that I have cut previously. I just rip them because uh, I make a lot of rugs, uh, throw rugs for our house. Um, you can simply just rip a sheet. I would recommend that it's not really too wide. I'd get it as thin as you can. And it's gonna be better if you can berate it. Um, so you can tie a knot at one end and just do a simple quick beret because it'll make it last a lot longer. But if you can't do that, you can simply do really thin strips and get it to the length that you want and that will burn. You can use shoelaces. You can use uh, from your hoods on your sweatshirts. Anything that you have can be used. On my table right here, uh, my husband is actually in the middle of making himself a ghillie suit and he's been taking burlap apart and he's got tons and tons and tons of strands that he's been pulling apart. With those strands comes off little ones. Whoops, that's not a little one. Here's a little one. So he's got these little, littler ones that are only so long. I can literally put oil in my saucer and you can also weight it down with a paper clip or a screw, screw, just wrap it around and just let that hang over the edge. Now keep in mind, if you're doing something like a little saucer or a little small dish and you're gonna have oil in it, don't put this near something flammable because you're gonna have an open flame that's just hanging off and you're gonna have to watch that. I would recommend doing it maybe over your uh, kitchen stove. That would probably be the safest place or unless you set it inside of a bigger pan or something, just to be careful, because I'd hate for anybody to have a fire. But these are some ideas on how you can have simple, quick light. You just gotta think about it a little bit and get yourself prepared. I, I highly recommend you stock up, you know, you get your candles, you get a strainer, get yourself some extra wicks, maybe a couple glow sticks. Make sure you have a lantern or an oil lamp on hand, because it's surprising how much oil you can actually acquire throughout the year. You know, you're cooking bacon and you have all that bacon grease. Strain it and there you go. That's all you have to do. It's nothing extra for you. It doesn't cost you anything, but yet you get lighting out of it. It's something great to have on hand. Now I will tell you, if you are taking ghee or any kind of uh, fat grease, you're, if you're not using it right away, go ahead and put that jar once you've got your uh, wick or whatever you're using in it. Um, go ahead and put it in your freezer because it will eventually go bad if, it, if it's not something you're planning on using right away. But you can take these items, try them out, try to do them yourself, get it perfected so that you understand what you're doing. The worst time to do it is waiting for an emergency to actually happen and then wondering how you're going to do it. Uh, most people, like I said in the beginning, already have candles, but let's find a way to try to get lighting in all your rooms. Let's practice getting, you know, taking your grease and straining it out and putting it in a jar or taking that old spaghetti sauce and putting a hole in the tip sticking your wick out and letting the bottom part soak it up. There's so many great, wonderful tips out there. So I just wanted to give you like a brief synopsis of things that you can do. I hope this helps you and maybe gets the wheels a turning on things you can do to prepare now, just in case you need it in the future. I really appreciate you watching our channel. You know, together we have to be able to figure these things out because that's how we all learn is by sharing our information and what good is it if we can't share it with people like you? So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And have a really great day. Bye-bye.